Hashimoto's patients need to watch out for other autoimmune conditions. Hashimoto's patients are at risk for developing a whole host of other autoimmune conditions. Now, what we're going to talk about today is something called chronic autoimmune gastritis. It's a stomach autoimmune problem. So, if you've been diagnosed with Hashimoto's and you have any of the symptoms I'm going to talk about today, you need to pay attention because I'm going to teach you how to be proactive, not reactive. So, let's get into it. Hashimoto's is the most common organ-specific autoimmune condition, and people with Hashimoto's are at risk for developing one of a bunch of different autoimmune conditions, and today we're talking about chronic autoimmune gastritis. Now, this is a stomach autoimmune condition, meaning it attacks the lining of the stomach. Now, specifically, it attacks these things called parietal cells. So, let's talk about the symptoms you should be on the lookout for that might tell you that you need to get checked for parietal cell antibodies. So, these parietal cells uh, they make stomach acid and they make something called intrinsic factor. And the symptoms you could get from that are kind of as follows. First thing you could get is you could get the symptoms of like too much acid, right? Like GERD, acid reflux, or a burning that's in the stomach. Not necessarily in the esophagus, but that's in the stomach. And it's a pretty nasty uh, gnawing burning. That would be the sign of kind of like too much acid. But since they make stomach acid, you could also get signs of low stomach acid. Now, what does that look like? Low stomach acid, usually you, you can kind of feel those symptoms when you're eating. So, if you eat and like while you're eating, your stomach starts to feel really heavy or after you're eating, it just feels like you're, there's a brick sitting in your stomach and it takes forever for your food to digest. That could be low stomach acid. Now, the other thing that parietal cell antibodies can cause is something called pernicious anemia, which is kind of a, a weird term. but Basically, what it is, it's a B12 anemia, but it's an autoimmune cause for it. Now, how does that happen? Well, these parietal cells make a substance called intrinsic factor. And intrinsic factor is absolutely necessary for you to absorb vitamin B12 orally. Okay? So, if your immune system is targeting these parietal cells with parietal cell antibodies and killing them, it's killing your intrinsic factor as well. And so your ability to absorb vitamin B12 goes down and down and down and down until eventually you can have a B12 deficiency. Now, what are the symptoms of a B12 deficiency? They're all over the place. But since B12 is really important for energy production, you can have a really significant amount of fatigue. Um, B12 is also anti-inflammatory. B12 is necessary to make myelin. So B12 deficiency typically will cause things like neuropathic symptoms or fatigue or variations of those. So that's kind of the symptom profile that you can start to get if you've got gastric parietal cell antibodies. You've got the high acid type symptoms, the low acid type symptoms, and then these B12 deficiency associated symptoms. So if you've got those symptoms, what test do you do to find out if you've got chronic autoimmune gastritis? Well, chronic autoimmune gastritis is just saying you've got parietal cells and your immune system is destroying the lining of your stomach. So the tests you do are parietal cell antibodies or parietal cell slash ATPase antibodies. And if you've got a high level of those, there's a really good chance you have significant autoimmune gastritis. Now, the reason I say chances are good is because, you know, autoimmune conditions kind of exist on a spectrum. This is really important. You can have what's like called preclinical, subclinical, and then like overt disease. So what does that mean? Preclinical means you've got the gastric parietal antibodies, but you don't yet have any of these stomach symptoms or B12 weirdness, you know. Now, that means you've got to get your B12 checked, by the way. I should have, I should have said that a second ago. In order to check your B12, you need to do what I, a test that I would do is called a methylmalonic acid. I wouldn't do the test that says serum B12. I just don't think that's a very reliable test. So, anyway, back it up. Uh, it could be preclinical, subclinical, or overt. So, preclinical means you've got the antibodies, but you don't really have any symptoms that would be associated with that. Now, subclinical means you've got the antibodies and you have some of the symptoms, but you don't have all the symptoms or all the findings that they could check off like a textbook example of that condition. And of course, overt clinical disease means you got everything. So, with gastric parietal cell antibodies, what it means is you've got the antibodies, you've got, sometimes we'll do a biopsy, you've got B12 deficiency, you've got burning in your stomach, that's all clinical disease. Now, I don't want you to get that far. So, it's important that you understand that if you've got high gastric parietal cell antibodies, what do you do about it? Well, the first thing you got to do is you got to do a follow-up test called a urea breath test or an H. pylori breath test. Why? Because in terms of cross-reactors, 
meaning things that can make the autoimmune attack on those parietal cells worse. There really aren't any foods that we know of, surprisingly. Uh, if you watch my channel a lot, you'd think there's all kinds of like wheat and milk, but as far as we know, that's not, that's not a factor. But what is a factor is H. pylori. Now, H. pylori is a very common bacterial infection, which also can cause symptoms of high acid and low acid and cause ulcers. But really, you've got to do what's called a breath test to find out if you've got it. And the point is, is if you've got H. pylori, that could be why your gastric parietal cells or antibodies are so high, and you've got to get rid of the H. pylori. Now, as a little side note, uh, the kind of standard medical way to do that is what they call a triple therapy. Uh, it's usually an antibiotic and an antacid and something else. I don't like to use that because of the potential negative effects of antibiotics. So make sure if, you're, if you find out you've got that you're working with someone that understands these, these alternative but effective ways of getting rid of the H. pylori. Now, in terms of treatment, that all really depends on your immunophenotype. What I basically mean is that, you know, phenotype just means what does something look like, and immunophenotype means what does your immune system look like. And your immunophenotype can be just as unique to you as your fingerprint. So I like to do what's called lymphocyte immunophenotyping, which is a way of getting your immune system fingerprinted and finding out in your case, what is your immune system doing under the hood of the antibodies? So yeah, you might have Hashimoto's, you might have the parietal cell antibodies, you might get the diagnosis of autoimmune gastritis, but what is your immune system really doing? There's T cells and B cells, and I'll just show you an example here. Uh, this test directly measures T cells, B cells, uh, natural killer cells, and you can just tell by looking at this example here that all these results are in the high column, right? Well, here's the trick. That person's symptoms could not have predicted that that's what those results were gonna look like. Their symptoms cannot predict what that's gonna look like. But it's really important because now, as a clinician, I see that these are high. I can go after that specifically. Because there's another scenario where she could have the same symptoms, same, uh, you know, same antibodies, but all those results are over here in the low column, and you treat that differently. So the point is, so it means you've gotta work with someone that knows A, how to recognize the symptoms of autoimmune gastritis, especially in someone that has Hashimoto's because you're at risk for this, what tests to do to find out if you really do have it, the correct test, the stuff I've mentioned today, uh, all the tests, including the phenotyping, et cetera, and then lastly, what do you do about it? Because some people that have a B12 deficiency because of their autoimmune gastritis, they're gonna need injections. Some people are gonna have H. pylori and they're gonna have to get H. pylori eradicated. Some people, all of them, if they're not already doing this, they've gotta do things to help regulate their immune system. Why? Because if you've got Hashimoto's and then you've got autoimmune gastritis, there's even worse odds or better odds, if you look at it, that you're gonna have an additional autoimmune problem. So we've gotta do something to calm all that down to slow down the autoimmune expansion. So I want you to be proactive, not reactive. So let's not wait and see if your stomach acid symptoms end up being gastritis. Let's just do the test now, right? So let's be proactive, not reactive. I hope you guys found that helpful and I'll see you later. Have a good one.